A new day for Arizona, how the state's newly elected governor is hoping to protect LGBTQ plus rights. Plus, filling the trophy shelf, how one movie is already making a splash this awards season. And preserving LGBTQ plus history, I go one-on-one -on -one with Stonewall National Museum Archives and Libraries' Robert Keston about uplifting queer stories. Welcome to Advocate Today, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. We begin in Arizona where newly elected Governor Katie Hobbs is issuing an executive order to protect LGBTQ plus workers. The order will safeguard LGBTQ plus state employees and contractors from discrimination. The state's Department of Administration will establish policies to ensure there is no discrimination based on sexual orientation or identity, in addition to race, religion, pregnancy, disability, and other factors. Arizona's previous Republican governor signed several anti-LGBTQ plus bills into law, one including restricting the rights of trans youth. Governor Hobbs is hoping to repeal those laws and add more protections for the queer community. Award season is here and one of my favorite films of the year is already receiving recognition. The National Society of Film Critics is naming Tar as its film of the year. The organization is awarding Kate Blanchett as Best Actress and Writer-Director Todd Field for Best Screenplay. Blanchett stars as Lydia Tarr, a towering and socially problematic world-famous conductor. The film explores Tarr's downward spiral as her misdeeds catch up with her where Me Too and cancel culture conversations converge. Her character is also a lesbian. Tarr is expected to make plenty of noise this award season with its gripping story and its cinematography. Kay Blanchett's role in Tar is being regarded as one of the best performances of 2022. I had the privilege of connecting with Kate and co-star Nina Haas a while back to break down the intricacies of the film. You can check out that and my other interviews with Hollywood's leading actors on the Advocate Channel's YouTube page to get ready for the award season. On this show, we emphasize the significance of on-screen representation, and one organization is doing that by preserving queer history. The Stonewall National Museum Archives and Library works to make sure the LGBTQ plus community is represented, including the hardships and triumphs over the years. I had the honor of speaking with SNMA Executive Director Robert Keston about the preservation process and how LGBTQ plus history is woven in with our shared American history. Before we started officially, you commented on, on my poster uh, saying that that was one of your major exhibits was Follow the Yellow Brick Road. So would you expound on what visitors to the archives can expect to see. Sure, uh, that particular exhibit looks at the history of our organization, which 2023 marks our 50th year anniversary. And what it does is it traces the lineage, so to speak, uh, of the gay community, the LGBTQ community, and The Wizard of Oz as a film, as a piece of culture and American history and our organization's history. And so we start in Kansas with things that happened before Stonewall and those items are in black and white. And then we move to Stonewall uh, and what that did and how that lit a fire in the bellies of this community. And then we go to Pride and we look at different Prides and we have Pride t-shirts and Pride posters and then we look at what happens when you have something good and then you relax into complacency. And then we have Anita Bryant and mm -hmm. AIDS and gays in the military um, before we wake up again and are able to come away from the wicked witch and get back into positive things. And then we look at same sex marriage and we look at the lifting of the trans ban. Uh, on gays serving in the military. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting there is that, as some people have said, Bill Clinton was the first black president because mm -hmm. of his focus. Well, the initial um, statement that came out of the administration with marriage was made by Vice President Biden. Mm -hmm. And then Biden as president lifted the trans ban on military service. So if Bill Clinton was the first black president, then in some respects, Biden is the first LGBTQ president. And then the exhibit continues following the yellow brick road all the way to the present, 
showing where complacency leads to problems and where activism and continued planning and, and active activity leads to a much stronger and more stable community. Wonderful, that sounds amazing. Um, how do you go about getting your uh, your documents and uh, you know finding everything that le leads to an exhibition that sounds incredibly sweeping and um, you know important? Well, a lot of our materials are donated. Mm -hmm. In fact, all our materials are donated. Some of them are donated um, without us asking. And in some cases, we look for people that might be able to help. So my predecessor secured almost 900 books from Jonathan Ned Katz's library. And Jonathan Ned Katz is possibly the leading historian of the LGBTQ community. Now in his 80s, he started doing this many, many years ago when it was almost dangerous to be that out front and that open and that kind of research. And yet now we have almost 900 books, which we occasionally will display as an exhibition. Uh, we have so many different things. Martina Navratilova's tennis racket, uh, Ellen DeGeneres' sneakers, a boot from Kinky Boots. So it, it stretches the horizon from sports and entertainment all the way to some of the most serious documents that keep record of our history and American history, which are the same. They're shared histories. Yes, absolutely. I want to talk a little bit more about history, particularly because this museum is located in Florida, where the Don't Say Gay uh, law is now in place. And R Governor Ron DeSantis is just one of the most dangerous anti-LGBTQ plus politicians I, I think we've seen ever. And would you talk a bit about the role of something like the archives, it, especially in a state where the politicians there are trying to erase us? Well, I think that it's important to recognize that what we do is we not only collect the history and the culture, but we present it. Mm -hmm. And so even now at the very end of our exhibit on Follow the Yellow Brick Road, we have a news article that talks about don't say gay. And then right next to that is a picture of Ron DeSantis with the caption that says, and pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Because we can never be intimidated or too fearful to be willing to speak out and tell the truth about who we are. And if we do that, we are more successful in our fight because our fight really isn't that we're special. It is that we're just like you. And not only are we just like you, but your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your teachers, your store owners, um, your neighbors, your friends are part of our community. And there is no other community in the world that can claim representation at every strata of society, except for the LGBTQ plus community. We cross all color barriers, all religious barriers, all economic barriers, all national origin barriers. Um, there's no place where we don't exist. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we are your family. Thank you to Robert for that wonderful conversation. You can visit stonewall-museum.org for more information. My full interview with Robert is also available on the Advocate Channel YouTube page. An iconic voice of the 1980s is receiving one of entertainment's most famous honors. Musician Billy Idol's legacy is being cemented on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Idol was credited as leading the second British invasion in the United States. His chart-topping hits like Moni Moni, Rebel Yell, and Dancing With Myself were all prominent during the early days of MTV. The 67-year-old is still performing and will be celebrating the 40th anniversary of his album debut this year. Idol has been open about his issues with addiction in the past, but has been sober now for some time. That's all the time we have for this advocate today. Be sure to check out the Advocate channel on YouTube for more of my full interviews. Theadvocatechannel.com is also live now. Head there for more content and coverage that advocates for you. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. I'll see you next time.